Hello and welcome to the Leading with Lean podcast. My name is Philip Holt, author of Leading with Lean, The Simplicity of Lean, and Leading Lean by Living Lean. And in this podcast, I narrate all three of my books, chapter by chapter, in which I share with you my over 30 years of experience as a lean leader across many companies globally. The Simplicity of Lean, Chapter 10, The Eight Wastes, Mura, Muri, and Muda. Despite the title of this chapter being The Eight Wastes, it's important that we first explore two less well-known but equally important causes of waste in the value stream. And in the book, you'll see an illustration of the three types of waste causation. Mura, unevenness, that's workload that is not balanced. Muri, overburden, work that creates burden for the team members or processes. And then Muda, the waste activities that do not add value. For confirmation, the spelling is Mura, M-U-R-A for unevenness. Muri, that's overburden, M-U-R-I. And then Muda for waste, M-U-D-A. These enemies of lean are, Mura is an unevenness of workloads such as due to seasonality, deadlines, end of month orders, month end closing, etc. Muri, overburden of workload such as an unequal distribution of work across team members, firefighting activity, stress and burnout. Muda, wasting the work which gets in the way of delivering value to the customers. Muda is covered in more detail in the next section, but before we get to that, it's worth explaining Mura and Muri a little more. In most organisations, Mura and Muri can be found everywhere, and some of the root causes of this have been discussed in the book so far, with a lack of daily management, visual management and workplace organisation to identify unevenness or overburden. Ineffective leader standard work, team effectiveness and issues of problem solving, insufficient standardised work and job instruction, which could make the work as simple and balanced as possible. Everything about the simplicity of lean is intended to eradicate these adversaries and consign them to the past history of the organisation. The lean leader must therefore understand their fall and be observant of any circumstance where Mura or Muri are in play, as no amount of waste reduction focused on Muda will be successful if it doesn't address these as well. Tim Woods What is Muda or waste? The simplest and the best definition that I have come across is anything that does not add value to a process and that a customer would not want to pay for if given a choice. However, we do need to apply some nuance to this, as it isn't as simple as it might sound, and there are several things that an organisation does that a customer, if asked, might immediately say that they wouldn't pay for. Nevertheless, many of these activities are necessary and can't immediately or easily be stopped. It can therefore be helpful to develop the definition to a next level of granularity. What you'll see in the book are the waste traffic lights illustration. Non-essential, non-value added. Customers do not want to pay for it does not transform material or information to the customer needs. Essential non-value added, sometimes called tolerated waste. Customers do not want to pay for it, must be done in today's conditions to meet customer needs. And then value added work, work that customers pay you to perform, it transforms a material or an information to the customer's wishes. What this does is help to get away from the many discussions and debates that a simple value add versus waste definition can drive. For example, there are many regulatory requirements that an organisation might put in place, and although this is surely a lot of waste that can be removed from these processes, a customer might say that they won't pay for them, even though they are absolutely necessary. Think, for example, about yourself as a customer buying a product or service. The company providing the product or service will have a number of steps in the value stream and many of them you would be prepared to pay for and see as value added, such as its design and development, creation process, delivery, installation, etc. However, they will also have many back office activities, such as their financial, IT and human resources activities that you as a direct customer, without too much thought, might consider non-value added. Nevertheless, All of us know that they are essential components of an organisation and heavily influence the viability of the business and the quality of its goods and or services. At this stage, I won't investigate this any further, as in chapter 13 it is covered in more depth, but suffice it to say 
that at each level of value stream assessment, we must determine which are the absolute value added activities, those that are non-value added but essential, and those that are waste. Creating a lean culture with a Kaizen everyday mindset requires our colleagues to identify the waste that might prevent process effectiveness and the delivery of customer value. To aid that, the mnemonic Tim Woods was developed, the source is unknown, to help a quick recall. T, transportation. This is any activity where materials, product, information or services moved around. Whilst it is intrinsically necessary to transport items or information, we must reduce this as much as possible. I, inventory. Whether there is the creation of a stock of goods, data, people, etc. within the value stream, it's considered an inventory. Again, while some level of inventory is necessary to facilitate the smooth operation of a value stream and prevent delays and stoppages, its minimization, or rather optimization, is essential to the effective creation of flow where problems are quickly visible. I often consider inventory to be the worst of the traditional seven ways, as it accumulates all of the others into an expensive, normally unrecoverable cost burden on the organization. M for motion. Motion is where the activity of a person happens, such as moving between stations, walking to a photocopier, etc. Motion is distinct in that it refers to the team members, whereas transportation refers to the materials, products and information moving. However, please note that when we're looking at a service value stream, such as a bank's branches, the movement of customers would be transportation waste, whilst the movement of the branch staff would be motion waste. W. Waiting. This waste refers to the time that a step in the value stream is awaiting an input or to deliver an output. It's generally wasteful as it is unproductive time and means that flow is broken down in the value stream. However, I often consider this the least bad waste, simply because if we're waiting, we're not creating the much more wasteful elements of overproduction, defects or inventory. Therefore, waiting should be viewed as wasteful when it is due to poorly running value stream, but not when our team members have stopped to solve a problem rather than keeping busy to keep production running. O for overproduction. Overproduction is one of the most common wastes in a non-league organisation, as the traditional mentalities of mass production, economies of scale, sweat the assets and the people, and the general reluctance to stop and fix problems, means that more of the product, information or service is created than is needed. O for overprocessing. Not to be confused with overproduction, this is when too much activity is undertaken to create the outcome, whether it is milling too much material from a part, overcleaning the product, or asking for too many approval signatures. Essentially, it is activity in the process that is more than is sensibly required to deliver a great product or service. D for defects. These are any quality issue with the product or service, not only at the point of delivery to the final customer, but at any stage in the process. Often quality is viewed as the final outcome, but in lean thinking, it is understood that the quality that the end customer receives is the accumulation of the quality at every step in the value stream. Defects must be eradicated at every step of the value stream, not tackled just at the end. And then S for skills or their underutilization. The previous seven ways are the traditional value stream ways. However, in more recent times, skills, or more precisely their underutilization, was added. This is by far the most wasteful of them all, as our people are the only productive asset that appreciates, and human beings have an inherent array of knowledge, skills and attributes that may be utilised by an organisation. Lean organisations understand this and partner with their team members to make every day a beneficial set of activities for both the company and its people. Where an organisation wastes its people's talent, it wastes its big opportunities for success. Waste in the office environment. It's often thought that the eight value stream wastes are not relevant in the office and other acronyms and approaches have been developed to treat them differently. However, I believe in keeping things simple. With a little education and training, they are just as relevant, arguably more so, when you consider how much of the waste in an office environment is hidden and hence much harder to find. I have therefore created a table to show some examples of Tim Woods in the office. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be practical in an audio book for me to read out every one of the examples. However, I will pull out one for each of them. 
So the waste of transportation, moving information between people or departments. The waste of inventory, electronic or paper archives. The waste of motion, handoffs between people or departments. The waste of waiting, waiting for colleagues, unbalanced workloads. The waste of overproduction, processing the work before the next person is ready for it. The waste of overprocessing, unnecessary reports. The waste of defects, mistakes, errors, omissions. The waste of skills, underutilizing people's skills. Where we train and develop our colleagues to identify the waste, they can make a significant impact on the organization's performance. For example, it's estimated that in the USA, $188 billion per year is wasted looking for misplaced items or information in the office. As with all of the lean approaches in this book, the importance is not the environment, whether it be a factory, an office, a warehouse, or a hospital, but rather having a focus on enabling people to do a great job every day. The tools and techniques work everywhere, and it's therefore important that their application, while sensitive to the industry, environment, and culture of the organization, is not sacrificed for the wrong reasons. And the chapter ends with a statement by Charles Darwin. A man who dares to waste one hour of time has not discovered the value of life. Mm -hmm.